All right, in this video, we're going to be talking about complex numbers. And this is lesson three in unit nine of college algebra. All right, y'all may remember from algebra two what I is. It's, you know, an imaginary number. And we just are going to say that we know that the square root of negative one is not a real number. But it, probably how you ran into it in algebra two was you were using the quadratic formula. And there are some parabolas that don't have any x-intercepts. And we knew that because they were asking us to take the square root of a negative number. It's like, what if we could? And that was really kind of how they started exploring these other types of numbers. It's like, well, what if I could? What would happen then? And then they realized that there's a lot of really nice stuff that you can do with complex numbers. Uh, they're not imaginary. They are very real. Okay. So i is the square root of negative 1. And that's, you know, definitely the most, like, basic thing you're expected to know from today. And then a relevant fact to y'all that will be of use to us a little later is that if I take i and I square it, I'm going to get negative 1. Because right? if you square the square root, you just kind of lose the square root and you are left with the radicate. So i squared equals negative 1. And that will come back a little bit later when we go to multiply two complex numbers. We'll need that i squared equals negative 1. And then also when we go to look at really high powers of i, this will also be relevant. Okay, so I'll come back and talk <laughs> more about that later. Bless you. All right, but it turns out that, you know, we can take imaginary numbers, these i's or two i's, three i's, and add them to regular numbers, and we're left with, you know, a kind of a larger set of numbers, the set of complex numbers. Now, first, I'm going to say that the standard form of a complex number is a plus bi, where a and b are just both regular numbers, what we would call real numbers. And we write that, you know, a and b are real numbers. These numbers I've written below, a, b, and c, are all examples of complex numbers. 3 plus 2i is a complex number. i is 0 plus 1i. And c is negative 2 minus i. And a question that you're going to be asked to do next time on the quiz. You're going to be asked to do it on the test. And I suspect you'll be asked to do it on the CLEP test, is to just plot the complex number. Like, pretty much what it was was... Okay, so it's 3 plus 2. I'll start with 3 plus 2, and then I'll talk about the clip in a minute. Uh, 3 is over here. Okay, now I need to take a step back. This, the horizontal axis right here that I'm kind of coloring over and making a little thicker, this is what we had up to now just considered as the number line, right? We've talked about the number line. We've drawn number lines to look at where functions are positive or negative. We've sketched solutions to linear inequalities on number lines. This is the set of real numbers. This is just the number line. So, you know, when I was labeling three, this is just three on the number line. This is the real axis. The vertical axis is going to be the imaginary axis. This is where all the eyes are coming in. Okay, so we're kind of got like all of a sudden like a second dimension to our numbers. But interestingly enough, there are the same number of real and complex numbers. Oh, maybe it's not a number, but uh, both of those sets are uncountably infinite. So if you're interested in that, just, you know. I think Google will look, at, look up some other YouTube video on that. The imaginary axis is, okay, well, it starts, you're just counting in terms of i, you know, like 2i, 3i, and you can go backwards too, you know, like negative i, negative 2i. That'll be as far as we need to go. And then we're pretty much ready to plot, you know, okay, maybe I'll just actually mark off each individual one on the 
on the real line. And this, in general, this whole plane here that we're about to start plotting points on is called the complex plane. And the symbol used to talk about the complex plane is that bolded C. Just like that bolded R is the symbol we use to talk about a set of real numbers. All right, so A, 3 plus 2i. You go over here to 3 up to 2i. There it is. I. We can plot I. That's just right here. It's 0 plus 1i. So that's B. And C is negative 2 minus I. Well, you go over here to negative 2. And down 1 to negative I. So negative 2 minus I is right there. That's C. I'll tell you. When I took the clip myself last year, I sat down. And, and one of the questions was pretty much like this. But there was probably another point. There were probably four points on a plane. And it was like, which of these is the point negative 2 minus i? And among those, you chose to answer choice C. It was really easy. It was one of the easier questions I saw on that test. Okay, So it's the type of thing that I want you all to be able to get right, because it's one of the kind of lighter weight items that you're going to face, really. And so that's how we plot complex numbers. All right, now the next thing I've got is not on your note packet, but or maybe it is a little later, but I want to talk about the complex conjugate right now. I just kind of want to put all of the rules down on the table, and then we'll do our arithmetic with complex numbers at the end. The complex conjugate of a complex number z equals a plus bi is given by z bar is like the symbol for the conjugate, and it's a minus bi. Now, complex conjugates are like, they're like, uh, you know, friends or cousins or something. You know, like they're, they're very related. And what they can do for each other, we'll see, you know, when we go to divide two complex numbers, we'll see the role the conjugate plays. But really, the importance of complex conjugates is kind of beyond the scope of the course. But that's another question that I was asked on the clip, was what is the conjugate of 7 minus 5i? Well, that would be 7 plus 5i. And again, all you have to know is what do they even mean by conjugate, you know? So w bar, if w is 4 minus i, then the, con the conjugate of 4 minus i is 4 plus i. You just change the sign of the number that's next to the i. It really is that easy, okay? And then graphically, if I was to plot W and W bar, here I've got 4, uh, there I've got minus I, and I know I'm going to need a positive I, that when you take the conjugate, what you're really doing is you're kind of just flipping across the real axis. <laughs> so you're going, yeah, like that. And that's complex conjugate. All right, so the first thing we're going to need to do before we do arithmetic with complex numbers is we're going to need to be able to evaluate the square root of a negative number. Okay, that's just something we're going to have to do. So I'm going to start off with something like something easy like the square root of negative 16. Now, if you're following along with the note packet, this is back on that first page of notes. Okay, the square root of 16, I'm going to use that same property I used last time, or maybe that, I guess that was two times ago now that I can split this off into the product of two square roots. So I can say that that's the square root of 16 times the square root of negative 1. Except now we know what the square root of negative 1 is. The square root of negative 1 is i. And the square root of 16 is 4, so that's 4i. But the square root of negative 3 is the next one. Okay, again, I'm going to split this off into... The product of two square roots is the square root of 3. It's the square root of negative 1. All right, the square root of negative 1 is i. But the square root of 3, uh, I don't really have anything to do with that. So I just kind of leave it as square root of 3 times i. Some number of i's. 
And the last one over there is uh, the square root of negative 18. And, you know, in this class, if you use that scientific calculator and you ask it to take the square root of negative 18, it's going to tell you, no, thank you. That's not a real number, domain error, or something like that. And it won't do it for you. So what you got to do instead is you got to take the square root of 18 times the square root of negative 1. Okay. Now, in our class, you can use the calculator to simplify the square root of 18. But if you couldn't, what you would do is you would split that off into its factors, particularly if one of the factors was a square number. And I know 9 divides 18, so that's what I want. I want the square root of 9, the square root of 2, and then the square root of negative 1. And that's where I get 3 square root of 2i, because i is the square root of negative 1. Okay, the first arithmetic thing we're going to have to do with complex numbers is add them and subtract them, right? That's the most basic arithmetic operation, so we'll start with that. Adding and subtracting complex numbers, it works exactly like you expect. All you got to do is combine like terms, okay? So I'm going to even write that in there. So when they give us some problem like 4 minus 3i plus negative 2 plus 5i, what you're doing is you're just combining the i's and you're combining the regular numbers. Okay? You're combining like terms. Okay, so you're doing really put together the numbers. It could be, you know, like 4 and negative 2. So this is 4 and minus 2 plus. And then I'm going to take the complex numbers, negative 3i and positive 5i. And then I'm going to just add them together. 4 minus 2 is 2. Negative 3i plus 5i is 2i. So there we, we wrote it in standard form. a plus bi. Number plus some other number of i's. We're asked to subtract. What you want to do is you want to just distribute the negative. Just like when we were doing this with some sort of algebraic expression and we are distributing the negative and combining like terms. That's exactly what we're going to do here. Okay, so this is negative 3 plus 7i, and then I'm going to take the negative and I'm going to distribute it to the 5 and to the negative 4i. Okay, so this is minus 5 but plus 4i. And then I'm going to look for all of the regular numbers. Okay, so negative 3 minus 5 is negative 8. And then the 7i, positive 7i and positive 4i is going to be positive 11i. That's how we subtract two complex numbers. Just like we expect. Mine like. Multiplying complex numbers also works exactly like you expect. Okay? We're going to use the distributive property. We're going to use FOIL. But there's one important fact that we need to keep in mind. Okay. And that is, what is i squared? What is it? Negative 1, yeah. Okay, i squared is negative 1. Okay. So I'm going to, you know, put a nice little cloud around that. That wasn't that nice, but that's um, right. And we're going to use that when we go to multiply two complex numbers. So, for example, 4i multiplied by 3 minus 6i, we're going to use the distributive property. Right? So, that's going to be 4i times 3 is 12i. And then 4i times negative 6i is negative 24i squared. What I'm going to do is I'm going to... You know, substitute on that i squared. And so that's 12i minus 24 times negative 1. Which is like adding 24. So it's 24 plus 12i to write it in standard form. Okay, standard form is a number plus some number of i's. It doesn't have any i squareds. It doesn't have any other powers of i. Next, we've got 
2 plus i multiplied by 3 plus i. This is something we can do. We're going to use FOIL. First is going to be 2 times 3 is 6. Outside is 2 times i is 2i. Inside is i times 3 is 3i. And last is i times i is i squared. Okay, again, when you need to substitute on this i squared, i squared is negative 1. So I've got 6 plus 2i plus 3i plus negative 1. All right, so 6 minus 1 is 5, and 2i plus 3i is 5i. You're done when you've written it as some number plus some number of i's. All right, there is one more that I'm interested in, in doing on the multiplication, and that would be kind of just to answer the question, what happens if you multiply a number by its complex conjugate? Okay. So that's the 5 plus i times 5 minus i. You know, the, we know that the conjugate of 5 plus i will just be 5 minus i. Okay, and it's like, oh, that kind of looks familiar. It kind of looks like, you know, when we factored a difference of two squares, or even when I talked about that radical conjugate a couple of times ago, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up for FOIL. Give me 25 minus 5i plus 5i. Oh, that's convenient. Minus i squared. Well, notice that the negative 5i and the positive 5i are going to add to 0. And that happened because I was multiplying the conjugates by each other. So I've got 25 minus i squared, which is 25 plus 1, is 26. So if you take a complex number and you multiply it by its conjugate, you will get a real number back. And we'll go to use that when we go to divide two complex numbers. Okay, of the four basic arithmetic operations, dividing two complex numbers is going to be the most complicated. But it's not so bad if you just remember there's one thing that we're supposed to do. Okay, We are supposed to multiply on top and bottom by the complex conjugate. So really we're multiplying by a clever form of 1 to re-express the thing as a complex number in standard form. Okay, so if I was tasked with dividing negative 3 plus i by 5 plus 3i, what I would do is I, okay, I need to multiply by 1, so I need to multiply by the same thing on top and bottom, so as to not change the thing, the conjugate of the denominator. So you think to yourself, what is the conjugate of 5 plus 3i? And the conjugate of a plus bi is a minus bi, so the conjugate of 5 plus 3i will be 5 minus 3i. And since I'm multiplying by 1, I have not changed the fraction. It's still the same, same thing. And now I just got to set up, set up for a bunch of FOIL. Okay, I'll do the bottom first because it's going to be easier with the factors canceling or the terms canceling. So first is 25. Outside is negative 15i. Inside is positive 15i. And last is negative 9i squared. the numerator. Negative 3 times 5 is negative 15. Outside is negative 3 times negative 3i is plus 9i. The inside is plus 5i. And the last is negative 3i times positive i is negative 3i squared. Okay, now I'm going to kind of come back in and Substitute on these i squareds. And I also know that the negative 15i and the positive 15i are going to add together to make 0. Okay, so I'm going to just kind of rewrite this a little bit. I got negative 15 plus 14i minus 3 times negative 1 would be plus 3. Divided by... 25 minus 9 times negative 1 is plus 9. 
Okay, so now I'm pretty much ready to go. This is negative 15 plus 3 is negative 12 plus 14i divided by 34. And this is technically in standard form. I'm all right with that. If you really want it to be number plus number times i, well, you distribute the 1 over 34. This would be negative 12 over 34 plus 14 over 34i. And yes, you could definitely, you know, simplify that fraction to be negative 6 over 17 plus 7 over 17i. Same number. Doesn't matter. Okay, another question I have gotten before, when I think when I taught Algebra 2 specifically, was what is 1 over i? What does that even mean? You know, I mean, we know that if we have 2, we take 1 over 2, that's a half. We kind of know what that relationship means. What is 1 over i? And now I don't expect to, you know, show you some sort of like beautiful relationship between i and 1 over i or what uh, all of this stuff. But I can show you how to compute it and put it in terms of a standard form of a complex number. What you're going to do, you're taking 1 and you're dividing by i. And you could multiply by the complex conjugate and multiply by negative i over negative i. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to multiply by i over i. And any of these where it's not really a complex number, but it's purely imaginary in the denominator, you really only have to multiply by i over i. Um, okay, so this is i over i squared. But I know that i squared is negative 1. And I know that if I divide something by negative 1, it's the same as multiplying it by negative 1. So 1 over i is negative i. Interesting. The last division question I've got for you is find 2 minus i over 2i. And this is one that's in your notes packet. So what you're going to do is you're going to take this and you're going to multiply it by the right form of 1. And you could multiply it by negative 2i over negative 2i if you like. But if it's purely imaginary, like I was saying earlier, you really don't need to worry about that. You can just do it this way, just i over i. So we're going to distribute this thing back into this difference of two things. I'll get 2i minus i squared divided by 2i squared. And I go in and I find the i squared, so I'm going to substitute on that. So I've got 2i minus negative 1 is 2i plus 1, so that's 1 plus 2i, divided by 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Okay, that is good enough for me. If you want to write this as the sum of two different things, that's negative 1 half minus i. Same number. The last thing I've got for you today is the higher powers of i. So again, kind of in Algebra 2, they probably asked you to take like i to the 87th or i to the 243rd or something weird like that. And maybe you remember that. Maybe you remember it being unpleasant. I'm telling you it's not that bad. So what I need to do is I need to just show you the typical cycle. Okay, i equals i. We know that i squared equals negative 1. If I take i to the third, that's like taking i squared times another i. So it's negative 1 times i, negative i. And then i to the fourth would be i to the third times i. Negative i times i. The negative of i squared is negative negative 1 is positive. So it goes in this cycle and so it goes in this cycle i negative 1 negative i positive 1. So when they ask you for something like I don't know i to the 71st what you have to figure out is what's the nearest number to 71 that's divisible by 4. Okay. Uh, and really what I told them to do in algebra 2 is just you know like grab a calculator and take 71 divided by 4. And, well, I'm going to do that right now. 71 divided by 4 is 17.75. So I'm almost all the way to a, a new multiple of 4. So I would say probably I would try 68 divided by 4. And that's 17. Okay, yeah. So that's equal to i to the 68 times i to the 3. And then the important thing here is that 68 is a multiple of 4. And 
So really what this is, is this is i to the 71 equals, well, i to the fourth. So i to the 68, I, I kind of lost my place. i to the 68 is i to the fourth to the 17 because 68 is 4 times 17. Okay. And then still multiplied by i to the 3. i to the fourth is 1. So that's 1 to the 17th power is 1 times i to the third. So this is just the same as i to the third. And that's negative i. Okay. And, you know, I think other than that, I'll, I'll work some more practice problems on this next time before the quiz. But this is all the stuff that you need to be able to do for next time. Uh, it's all the arithmetic stuff, all of the complex roots of polynomials and, and, you know, deducing how many complex roots there are, actually working with them using the quadratic formula. That's all stuff we're going to do next time. So all that algebra stuff can wait till next time. We're really focused right now on arithmetic with complex numbers. So if you need anything, just come see me in the morning or, you know, maybe after school or maybe during cab time or whatever. But I'll be around. <laughs>